All right, we're back in four six. So tangent has similar identities to sine and cosine. So if we take this sine and x plus one over cosine x plus one, um, and simplify those identities a little bit, um, we'll end up with these tangent identities. So again, these are useful for right angles that aren't on the unit circle, but maybe could be made from angles on the unit circle. So like tangent of 11 pi over 12. We don't know the values of over 12 on our unit circle. Um, so let's write it in terms of angles that we know. So let's see, 11 pi over 12 could be 12 pi over 12 minus pi over 12, which is pi minus pi over 12. Uh, not helpful because we don't know pi over 12 on the unit circle. Um, how else could we make pi 11? Um, I might be tempted to do five plus six, um, which is five pi over 12 plus pi over two. Pi over two is helpful, five pi over 12 isn't. Um, so what ends up being helpful on this one is eight pi over 12 plus three pi over 12. A little bit of guess and check till we find one that works. And the reason this works is eight pi over 12 simplifies to two pi over three, which we know that on the unit circle, plus pi over four. And now we have to use an identity. We cannot do tangent of two pi over three plus tangent of pi over four. Um, we can't just split up tangents. Algebra doesn't work like that. So that we have to use an identity. So we're gonna go ahead and use this first identity. X one will be two pi over three and x2 will be pi over four. All right, let's plug in and then we'll draw the unit circle. So tangent of two pi over three plus tangent of pi over four, all over one minus tangent of two pi over three times tangent of pi over four. And then we'll find these individual values and combine them. So I'll do pi over four first because that's a slightly easier angle pi over four. That's the medium side, so we learn that they're the same, um, x and y, and sine and cosine. And then tangent is just sine over cosine or y over x. So root two over two over root two over two, and that's one. So we'll change both of those to ones in a second. Um, two pi over three. So there's pi over three, two pi over three. So sine gets the long side, so sine or y will be root three over two. X gets the short side, one half, and then since we're on the left side, it's negative. So the visual I think really helps with positive negative. Tangent will be y over x again, so tangent of two pi over three will be y over x, root three over two over negative one half. Twos cancel out and we just get negative root three. Cool. And so let's start plugging in. So tangent of two pi over three is negative root three plus one all over one minus negative root three times one. So plugging in the negative root three for tangent of two pi over three and one for the tangent of pi over four. And it looks like this simplifies to negative root three plus one all over one plus root three. I'd probably just rewrite it as one minus root three over one plus root three. Um, it's fine as is, it's an ugly answer. Um, so let's derive some new formulas. So cosine of 2x. Uh, I'm going to rewrite it as cosine of x plus x. That's allowed, right, because the x and the x are still in the cosine. Can't split up the cosine, but x plus x is fine. And we'll use the identity again. So I'm going to use the cosine sum identity. Um, we just have x1 and x2 are the same thing, just to see what happens. So cosine of x1 is cosine of x, cosine of x. 
minus sine of x sine of x. And so we get this new identity where cosine of 2x is cosine squared minus sine squared of x. So if for some reason we have a different angle, a double angle, 2x, we can rewrite it in terms of regular x. Um, we can also rewrite this. Um, we might remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So I can, we also learned that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared, and sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Those were our Pythagorean identities. We can plug those in to make even more identities. So cosine of 2x, we could also rewrite as 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared. Just replacing cosine of x squared with 1 minus sine squared. And we get a new identity of 1 minus 2 sine squared. Just deriving new identities, not memorizing them or anything. We'll use them in a second. We can also replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine to see what happens. So we get cosine squared, and instead of minus sine squared, we'll say 1 minus cosine squared, which is cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. And we get 2 cosine squared minus 1. So cosine of 2x actually has three identities, and these are the, all three of them. We just kind of pick and choose depending on what's better for what we currently have. So. We just derived them, now you can use them. Let's try sine of 2x as well. So sine of 2x, we do the same thing. We write it as sine of x plus x and use one of our old identities. Those are way at the top. So we'll use the addition identity. So we can say sine of 2x is sine of x times cosine of x, right? Because x1 and x2 are the same thing, plus cosine of x times sine of x, and we get what? These are the same thing, they're both sine x, cosine x, so 2 sine x, cosine x. Um, and that's another double angle identity. So we might use this if maybe we know the value for x, but we don't know the value for 2x. We'll mess with these in a second. So that would be this one. And then tangent of 2x we can derive, but we'll just take, accept it. But tangent of 2x comes from some algebra. Oops. Of sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. Right, notice the angle always matches. So sine over cosine, they have the same angle as tangent. Um, so we'll use these double angle formulas in the next example, in the next video. Um, but the idea with double angles is you'll notice we're starting with a 2x on the left side, right? And the angle on the right side is a different angle. So just be cautious of that. So I'll see you back in the next video.